Today we're going to see if pushback bumpers actually work the way they're supposed to with a little bit of science using a pump jack, a bathroom scale, and a 2015 Volkswagen Golf. Is it going to work, or have they been designed by the manufacturers to circumvent the rules? And what's the FIA doing about it? Let's get into it. Now we all know what pushback bumpers are, although front fairing pushback is what the FIA is kind of forcing us to call them today as officials. When one cart hits another with their front bumper, it's supposed to push the bumper back once it reaches a certain threshold. Part of the problem is we don't know what that actual threshold is. Some people say it's five miles per hour. Some people say it's 30 pounds, because if they don't tell you what it is and you test it yourself, you can't tell them that they didn't achieve it. Now, since the FIA won't tell us how they actually measure the activation of these devices, what the actual threshold is, we have to look at the only documents they give us, which is homologation. So the way that the FIA does this is they mount the front fairing that you want homologated with a pushback setup on it onto a mock front bumper on a skid. The fairing is then pressed up against a flat plate standing in for the cart that you're hitting. It is moved at 100 millimeters per minute until the time that the, you know, bumper activates. Can you see the problem? So what if we actually try to do this? For activation, the actual FIA metric is completely unknown. Let's see if we can figure out how much pressure it actually takes to activate one of these things. First, we're doing the static. We've got the cart pressed up against the curb. We've got the bottle jack here between the wheel of my car and the bathroom scale. And the bathroom scale is up against a three-piece adjustable rear bumper, hitting roughly in the center, which kind of gives you an idea of, you know, entry to a corner, you give somebody a whack. Now, what do you think is gonna happen? Do your guesses down below. How much pressure on that scale in pounds is it gonna take to activate? Isn't it gonna activate at all? What's it gonna do? All right, let's see what's gonna happen. Let's, yeah. All right, let's see if this is actually gonna do anything. It's doing something. You're driving that nose in. It should. Pushing the, it's pushing the cart. It's pushing yeah. the rear bumper. Yeah, it's definitely pushing the rear bumper more than anything. Do I need to stop? You're getting close to you're getting close to a, a, a good impact. It lifted the nose off the ground. Yeah. Holy. Shit. All right. Have, have we like like? Now we didn't have a driver in the seat in the first place, but since it list, lifted the front tires off the ground, it was you know probably 160 pounds underweight. So we put Jeff in the seat. So uh, you want to sit? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think that's going to make the difference. I think it should keep the nose on the ground. Ooh, that was beer. That was beer. Uh, and I guess no brakes. Yeah, no brakes. Let's see. Okay. This is with you in the car. No, don't worry about frame. No, I mean that camera to block the bumpers. No, you're still picking my front end up. Look at that. I'm looking at the bend in the back. Well, There's no way you're, you're not Your rear bumper. end is give, has given at 58. It won't go above 58. And it's lifted the nose of your cart off the ground. With you in it. With me in the go-kart. And, and at, wait, at master's weight. At master's weight. It's a 375 pound go-kart right now. Holy shit. I really did not expect that. Can you do that again? That is one Jeff power that <laughs> can't activate the bumper. And he 
in case you think we were cheating in some way with them over tightened or glued or some other cheating nonsense. I can undo, Sorry, it. undo them both. No, just undo it and keep it undone. Oh. Yeah. And now push it. And it pops right in. I think it's nothing. Crazy. That's amazing. Now, I did not expect it to fail in this way. I always knew that it redirected forces to the ground because you can hear them hit the ground, you know, on a start especially. But to have them actually fold in like that and lift the front tires off the ground, that was not something I was prepared for. And I was certainly not prepared for 140 pounds of pressure to still not activate the bumper. And then for Jeff to be kicking the bumpers dynamically, you know, up against the tire at the front and up against a rear bumper, and still nothing. Nobody can even pretend to argue that a cart can take a 140 pound hit and not be affected on the entry to a corner. And when he was doing it dynamically, he's pushing against the rails so that that softer rear bumper is not a factor. And that solid rear bumper on the cart in front, when we've got them lined up, you can see that thing barely deflects at all. And yet still, we've got no activation. Now, I did ask Jeff if he would let me run one cart into another faster and faster and faster until it did activate, but he rightly declined out of fear of actually damaging the chassis. You know, seeing how much force they were taking, I think that was the right decision. What we've demonstrated here is that manufacturers have manipulated their design so that these fairings will not activate the pushback bumper system at least not without a ridiculous amount of force. They are for-profit businesses, of course, and are you going to buy the one that activates easily or the one that doesn't? It just makes business sense. And the people who need to make sure that these manufacturers are building these things the way that they were designed to work, that's the FIA. They are clearly not testing these things, you know, as they are raced in the wild. I can only find an article from 2001 where the FIA actually took a handful of bumpers from race and tested them and said they were compliant. If that's the only time that they've ever tested them, we're going into 2026. Is anybody looking? And if they are testing these things, obviously the testing method is deeply flawed. Those cones are mounted to go-karts with a specific weight. They are not on a skid. And they're also not acting against a flat plate. They are acting against a bumper. Some bumpers are softer than others. All of these factors have to be taken into consideration when you're actually going to be designing a device to be essentially an impact switch. Impact being a key word here because these are dynamic incidents. They do not happen statically. They do not happen at 100 millimeters per minute. And to put that speed into context, that is 0 0.006 kilometers per hour, or 00373 miles per hour for my American friends. Does that sound like the kind of impact that you're going to have? Remember, there is no regulation or rule if it is not policed with reasonable consequences. So if the FIA is not regularly checking these things for compliance, the manufacturers are going to change their designs to gain an advantage, and without them being policed, they stop being a way to stop contact and simply become a way for drivers to use them to move other drivers out of the way. So let me know what you think. Is this how you actually thought they were gonna fail? Did you know that this is how they're gonna fail? Do you think the FIA is actually testing these things? What should we do with them? Let me know down in the comments. Remember to like, subscribe, share, comment on what you think about all this stuff down below. And as always, I'll see you at the racetrack.